This lecture will focus on how the ABS seeks to measure the income distribution in Australia. Now, how the ABS measures income distribution is firstly that they take a survey. So they survey a representative sample, or as close to being representative as possible, of 0.2% of the population. So they get trained uh, people or trained interviewers to ask individual questions regarding the sources or the nature of income of different households in that 0.2%. So they ask questions about their income, their interest repayments, uh, their rent, their salaries, their gross incomes, their profits, and their government transfer payments coming into the into the household, and all sorts of questions relating to income. Uh, as earned or unearned income by the households. Okay, so that's the first step to the measuring income distribution process. So the second step is that after they've gathered the data, they're going to organize it, the data, ascending, ascendingly. So they're going to organize the data from poorest to richest. So after surveying the 0.2% population of households, they're going to organize uh, these 0.2% of the households from the poorest household to the richest household. And this could take a while because 0.2% of the population is still a very, very large number. Okay, so thirdly, after they've organized or organized the, um, the distribution of income ascendingly from poorest to richest, what they're going to do is they're going to split into quintiles. So they're going to group the poorest and the richest into 20% groups. And overall there will be five groups. So five quintiles or groups. But in economists they're going to call these quintiles. And as the name suggests, quint being five there will be five 20% groups. So they're going to group these people as 20% blocks. So ascending from the poorest uh, to the richest. And that's going to make the spread of incomes making up 100% of all income recipients. So after they've done all these calculations, the last step which is to diagrammatically represent represent all the data on a Lorenz curve or a Lorenz diagram more, more precisely. And we're going to look at an example of a Lorenz diagram at the moment. The Lorenz diagram is right here. Okay, so the, the Lorenz diagram maps the share of total disposable income of or net wealth. So there's a share of total disp disposable income on the y-axis. And we know that disposable income is income after taxation against the x-axis which are the quintiles. Okay. So we know that here the top is a hundred percent. The middle, we're going to around 50%, and we're going to split this up into two as well. Okay, so now we have five different quintiles. It's the x-axis, so we have one, two, three, four, and five. So they're the five different quintiles, and they're the percentage share of the total disposable income in an economy. And what the Lorenz diagram shows is that it shows the way income or wealth are divided or shared in an economy. And this is usually done in these quintiles. So it contains firstly a 45 degree line, which I'm going to show here. So this is a 45 degree line. And this shows a line, this is also called the line of total equality. So what this means is that the bottom the bottom 20% of the people share 20% of the income, 
the second quintile also share 20%. And everybody, so on, would therefore share the same proportion of national income. So there is no inequality here. Everyone is the same. Everyone has the same income on this 45 degree line. But in reality, we know this is not the case. In reality, different people have different proportions of income. So let's say, for example, that being 25%, the first quintile only has around 5% um, of total gross income. The second, quint uh, second quintile has around 10%. They're a little bit better off. This is around 10%. So cumulatively, that would add up to around 15%. The third quintile, they're a little bit better off. They uh, have around 20% of total gross income. And that's going to accumulate to around 35%. So the first three quintiles have 35% of the total income. The fourth quintile, again, are better off still. And they're going to have around 30% of the gross income. And so 35 plus... 30 equals around 65 percent. So the third quintile uh, shares around 30 percent of gross income. And last but not least, we have the final quintile, and theoretically it should add all out up to 100 percent. And therefore here, the the last quintile would share around 35 percent of the total income in the in the economy, which is given by 100 minus 65 percent. So if we can continue to draw this line, we'll connect the dots here, we can draw what is called the Lorenz curve. So this white line is known as the Lorenz curve. The Lorenz curve measures or shows or diagrammatically represents the income distribution in an economy. This doesn't really tell us much about the income distribution, though it just shows us diagrammatically how far away the Lorenz curve is, measured, is from the line of total equality. But what it does give us is it gives us a way of measuring the Gini coefficient. Now the Gini coefficient is a number between 0 and 1. Because we know the area of this graph, is 1 because the four, the 5 quintiles add up to 100% of the population and also because this is 100% we know that the area underneath here must always equal to 1. So what the Gini coefficient is is that is a number between 0 and 1 depicting a numerical representation of total equality or the relative uh, level of equality in the economy. Now if the Gini coefficient it measures the area between the Lorenz curve and the line of 40 degrees or the 40 degree line of equality. I'm just going to shade this uh, light blue. So this is the Gini coefficient here. And we're going to just say this is around 0 0.3. So the closer the Gini coefficient is to zero here, the more equitable the distribution of income is. Because if the area between the, the Lorenz curve and the line of 40 degree, um, or the, the 40 degree line is zero, then therefore the Lorenz curve is essentially the 45 degree line. So therefore the area between the 45 degree line of total quality and the Lorenz curve showing the distribution of income would then be zero. We suggest that everyone has the same amount of money. We suggest the economy is totally equitable. But if the Lorenz curve was closer to uh, 1, this shows that the proportion of income is 100% given or 100% uh, distributed to the top quintile in the economy and the first, second, third and fourth quintiles would earn 0% of the total income pie in the economy. So the, the Gini coefficient is calculated by measuring the area between the Lorenz curve 
and the 45 degree line. Yeah. So the higher the Gini coefficient or the Gini number, the greater the degree of inequality in the distribution of income. And although we don't require, or we don't, we aren't required to figure out the exact Gini coefficient, is it's um it might be helpful to know that they measure it by actually uh, running a regression or trying to figure out the the equation of this uh, the line or the Lorenz curve here, and then using integration to find or calculus to find the area of this um, of the the area between the 45 degree line and the line of total equality. So that's the Gini coefficient, and how the Gini coefficient is important is an important tool in measuring the income distribution in an economy. So that's how the ABS measures income distribution in Australia. They want the Gini coefficient to be as close to around 0 0.3. At the moment, it's around 0 0.3. 331 for Australia, but they don't want the Gini coefficient to be zero because if it is total, totally equitable in society, this may compromise the achievement of other economic goals. And we're going to talk about how there is, in fact, a trade-off between equity and efficiency um, in the economy or in the study of economics in a further lecture. But for now, we're just going to see that measuring income distribution takes four steps. And it can be represented by one, the, G, the the Lorenz curve, or secondly, a more pertinent measure, the Gini coefficient.